thrash metal band Voivod. Ah, good tea. And um, the reason is because they have just announced a tour, finally a tour, to where I'm able to go and see them live. I've seen them three times already, been waiting for this since 2019, finally happening. Very excited indeed. So we're going to do another tier list video on their albums. I have done a video talking about all of their albums in my regular format before, but um, you know, the tier lists have been going quite well. I think they've been fun and creative. Always many tier lists to be made about my topics. So yeah, let's keep going with that, shall we? We have Voivod, they've been around since the early 80s. This is their 40th anniversary tour coming up. Very excited to see them. So you should definitely check this band out if you like sci-fi bands, thrash bands, progressive bands. They're, they've got a wide sound. They're pretty different from album to album. And I like that and I think their new stuff is just as good as the old stuff, if not even better. So, to start off, we have their first album. This list is in chronological order. War and Pain, which is from like 83 or 84, I believe. Um, this one is going to be, um, it's I think about a B tier album for me. Uh, I don't really listen much to Voivod's first two albums. It's where they were kind of a little more like straight up regular thrash metal bands. They hadn't, I think, gone as much into the outer space uniqueness that the next couple albums had. You'll see those are going to be ranked quite higher. Um, so they're not quite there yet, but it is pretty good stuff. So I like it a lot. Obviously, it's got the title track, which is the band's title, Voivod, which is a great song. They, like, end every show with that song. It's their anthem got some fun proggier songs like War and Pain and Nuclear War. Lots of war in this one. Um, Warriors of Ice. So yeah, I like this one a lot. It's a B tier album for me though because I don't listen to it too much. Um, and then we have the next one which is um, and that one's also pretty good but again I don't listen to it too much so I'm gonna put that also at B tier. Like, these are both good albums. They're quite stylistically similar. They just hadn't gotten the sound quite yet. Um, lots of people really like early Voivod because it's probably, like, the most unabashedly straight up and thrash. So if that's your thing, that's great. Me, I like a little more sustenance to it. Um, but it's got some great killer tracks. Yeah, I just, I should check them out a bit more, you know. Um, uh, then we have, we're going quite a lot higher up the scale for the next one, which is Killing Technology, which that's going to be straight into S tier for me on that one. Um, and that's because that's like everything I wanted from Voivod. It was one of the first albums that I listened to to get into them. And, you know, because I was mainly listening to Vector, and everyone was like, Vector's basically a modern version of Voivod. I'm like, okay, this Voivod band. And um, I also knew them from Guitar Hero. Um, and they had the one song um, uh, off of Kator's album, The X Stream, right? So, yeah, this album, it's all sci fi, outer space dystopian future, eerily prescient of the times at the time and the times now. That's very good. It just flows very well. It's like the definitive Voivod sound. It was taking the thrashiness but making it very proggy, all-around great killer album, S-tier album for me. Uh, but then if you can believe it, the next one, Dimension Hatros, I think is even better. So that's also an S-tier album for me. Because now they're going even more 
all out with the science fiction stuff and the, the dystopian futures and it's maybe less thrashy and it's still more proggy and off kilter you know um but all very good stuff and this one's kind of a concept album it's about like the uh the experiences of the voivod creature in the dimension Hatros because he goes into like some other dimension and encounters a bunch of people there like the chaos mongers who maybe they're terrorists or maybe they're freedom fighters and the technocratic manipulators big brother is watching and all that stuff yeah so there's a lot to this album and it's really great s tier album from me but then if you can believe it it gets even better because then we have a nothing face which is also an s tier album for me um nothing face is basically like what if rush made a thrash metal album but it was still a prog album first less so than thrash um at the time it was probably their least heaviest album still got some pretty cool killer metal riffs to it but you know that's not really what you're there for anymore you're there for the progginess and the experimentalness and, and the science fiction this. So we like that a lot. Um, it's a very good album, and I just love every minute of it. So very well done. Now, if you haven't subscribed to my music channel, I have another one. It's called The Synthetic Overlords, and I have covered the entirety of the Killing Technology album. All the guitar, the bass, the drums, the vocals, and I have covered the entirety of Dimension Hatros, and soon I shall be releasing an entire cover of the Nothing Face album. I've done all three, the big three, because I had these uh, the tab books. Which has all the guitar parts to it. And the lyrics. Success. Um, I like when they break out the prow 
from that album, that's good. Uh, but The Outer Limits, that one I can, I'm gonna say is A tier, because that was, I think, a better balance of the sound. Again, it's got some metal to it, but it's not like metal, metal. It's like the production makes it sound not too heavy. The guitar seems like it's a little more of like a hard rock guitar than a metal guitar. The riffs aren't as thrashy. There's some very light songs, more acoustic stuff, more clean stuff, more spacey Pink Floyd stuff. There's another Pink Floyd cover on this album. It's a cover of the Nile song, which is funny because that's one of Pink Floyd's heaviest songs. And of course, it's got the 17-minute epic, the only epic song from Voivod, um, Jack Luminous, right? Uh, and it's a great song. It's so good. I love it so, so much. Um, I also like that they're now playing Fix My Heart a lot from this album, because that one's very good. I love the, the guitar sound on that intro. It's so good, just like sonic perfection. So that's a real good one. Um, after this, it's where the band splits up a little. I think it was um, Blackie had been the bass player for a while, and he left. Um, and then it was uh, Snake, their vocalist, he left also. So they had Eric Forrest come in, and he does bass and vocals, so they were a power trio. Um, and they did two albums with him in the 90s. So the first one of these two albums is Negatron, and the sound is now more like doomy and sludgy and very 90s and groove metal. And it's a pretty cool sound, but like, I find I don't really come back to lots of songs on Negatron, so I'm only gonna give that one a, a C tier for me, personally. Um, I don't have too much to say, it's like, I like a cosmic conspiracy, but it's something about it, it's like, it just, it just doesn't click with me, this album hasn't clicked with me yet, which is strange, because Phobos has very much clicked with me. And I'm going to give that one an A tier and say that that album is quite an underrated album. I was just listening to The Tower earlier today, and Forlorn, and Rise, uh, Mercury. So many uh, great songs from that album. They were like down into D tuning rather than standard, and the heaviness really shows, and it's such a great dark album. Um, and I think it's also because um, I didn't really know like the history of the band when I listened to this album. Like, I think knowing what's going on behind the scenes of an album can impact your opinion of it. And there were so many bands I listened to growing up, but I didn't like know the history of what's the story behind the album. I just listened to it. It's probably why like I I don't mind load and reload. I just thought those were Metallica albums. I didn't know, oh, that was considered a controversial choice because they changed their style, or they had changed some band members around, or things like that, or they cut their hair. I just thought, like, that's a Metallica album. That's a Metallica album. They're all Metallica albums. Same thing goes for Voivod. I just knew Phobos was an album, and I started listening to it, and I thought it was awesome, and there were times I'd be listening to the entire album on repeat, just like that. So that's an A tier for me, which makes it odder that Negatron's only C tier, because they're quite similar in sound. Um, then that's the end of that era of Voivod, because uh, Snake comes back into the band, and actually Jason Newstead from Metallica comes in, ironically, we're making connections here, um, because he Vulcan left the band from Metallica and joined Voivod, and pretty great decision. Unfortunately, I'm not the biggest fan of this era of Voivod, uh, personally, so for the cell title one, I'm only gonna give that a D tier. This is also more of the straight up forward hard rock era of Voivod, and again, it's all good music. I don't think Voivod's made a bad album. This is all like, you know, in terms of Voivod, it's S or D tier. But this one, I, I don't know any songs off it except for We Carry On. 
um, I don't really come back to it a lot. It's just not really what I listen to Voivod for. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of forgettable for me. I think I should try to get into it a little more. But I just, I don't really dig that style. Um, but then the next one we have is Kept Horrors. And now, like, I'm going to try not to be too mean to these next two albums because of the unfortunate circumstances behind them. That was that their guitar player, Piggy, he was suffering of colon cancer and he died during the making of Kept Horrors. So Kept Horrors and the next one, Infini, were made from recordings off of Piggy's laptop that the band found and, you know, made into songs. So it's not really fair to say that they're bad albums. They were doing the best they could, given the circumstance. Um, but yeah, they're not that great. They were just putting them out there to put them out there. That's okay, right? I can't hold it against them. You know, they were trying. Uh, so Kator's is a C tier though, because that one at least has a couple of songs I listen to, like The Getaway and The Extreme, and Mr. Clean's a fun song. So there's some good stuff on there, but I just don't really get into it uh, that much, personally. And then same goes for Infini as a D tier one for me, because I barely listen to it, I usually only listen to this era when I'm like going through the entire discography. Okay, it's all good stuff. There's some underrated bits on there. I think it would be cool if the band brought it back a little more. I think they've been playing Rebel Robot from Self Titled um, because they got Jason Newstead back with them for this 40th anniversary Morgoth Tales album, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think it could use maybe a, a little more love here and there. Uh, but then we have the Voivod Revival era. Um, and that is, we have these next series of albums where uh, Dan Mongrain, aka Chewy, joins the band. And, um, you know, he's definitely a great addition to the band. And I think Blackie came back for one album and then he left again. And then we had Rocky their new bass player, and he's also been really great with the sound, so these guys, you can tell they were definitely fans of the band growing up, and now they've joined the band, and they're bringing in a fresh sound, and this whole time we've had um, Away on drums, and Snake's back on vocals, and I feel like these guys are really going stronger than ever. It's very rare for a band to like start in the 80s and have their peak, and then go through a bunch of stuff, and then come back and the new stuff is pretty much comparable with the old stuff. Uh, that's not an easy feat, but these guys are managing it. So, Target Earth, that's also a pretty good album. We'll give that one a B tier, because I think the first half I listened to a lot. Like, those first bit of songs from Target Earth up until Mechanical Mind, that gets a lot of play for me in the second half like Warcaic and Resistance are pretty good, but I just don't listen to them as much, personally. Uh, but it's a great sound, you know, the sound is there, it just needs a little bit more refinement. Next there was the EP, Post Society, which I think is like one of the strongest collections of songs from them. Post Society, Fall, We Are Connected, Forever Mountain, the cover of Silver Machine showing their Hawkwind influence, yeah, that's a great EP, one of my favorite ones. As an EP, that's an S-tier EP, um, but it's not on here because we're doing studio albums. So the next one then is The Wake. That one is an S-tier album for me um, because it's like everything I wanted from this new era of Voivod. It's got the new sound. They've been playing in half-step down tuning to make it darker and heavier. Um, it's a full-on concept album again, harkening back to like Phobos or Dimension Atros, which is great. And it's got a story to it. It's just absolutely insane. The musicianship from all these guys, the whole album. Um, it ends with Sonic Mycelium, the closest we've gotten to another Voivod epic, which is like an underture. It's an anti-overture of all of the themes from the album. like mashing together, and it references the other Voivod 
epic Jack Luminous, so that's pretty good. As I listened to it so much when it came out, and I hadn't been listening to it in a while, and I, I came back to it recently with the announcement of the tour, and just like, yeah, well, chef's kiss, everything about that album, so, so good, so well done. Um, and then they followed it up with uh, a Synchro Anarchy, which at first I actually didn't get into this album that much. Surprisingly, it just, I, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't in the mood for Voivod, and that happens. I go through phases with bands, and then I'll be like, this band is all I listen to, and then it's that band. And some of my favorite bands I go years without listening to, actually, because I just, I know it all, I don't need to. Um, but when I finally sat down to get into this one more, it was also really good. I think for me it was the fact that it was not as good as The Wake that put it down a little. But that's because The Wake's S tier, and this one's still good. And I've been listening to it lately, I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty great sound they're doing. Um, so that's an A tier album for me, personally. Uh, a lot of great songs on there, just not as much of a concept to hold it together like with what The Wake had, and not as many long and proggy songs as that album. I think it's it's kind of a short collection of songs. It's a single disc as well, but that's okay. Having a short, simple album is good. I say this as much that King Gizzard has set a good precedent for bands should just focus on doing single LP albums and make the double album for something special. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see what these guys do next. The most recent thing they did was the Morgoth Tales 40th Anniversary album, where they had, like, they did a new song, I think, and that was Morgoth Tales. There's a home cover version. It's a cover, I'm not sure. Um, Condemned to the Gallows was that, like, from an EP of theirs, I think. And then every other song is, like, a song from each album, so like they got one song from War and Pain, and one song from Roar, I think Condemned to the Gallows is the song from War and Pain, but it's a B-side, um, and I like that they didn't just pick like the obvious big hit, in some cases they did, like the song from Killing Technology is Killing Technology, but the song from Dimension Hatros is Macro Solutions to Mega Problems, it's not really a big one. And from Nothing Face, they picked Pre-Ignition, which is a song they hadn't really been playing much. When I've seen them, the songs they've done from that have been Unknown Knows, uh, Astronomy Domini, and Into My Hypercube. And I know on the same tour, they were also playing Inner Combustion, but they didn't play that one that night. So it's cool to see them bring out a retro song, and then they've been doing more stuff from Outer Limits, like Lost Machine, Fix My Heart. And um, they've been doing some Phobos Negatron stuff and the Jason Newsted stuff, and they got Eric Forrest and Jason Newsted to feature on it. That's really cool, you know. Um, nice to see that they're like still all keeping in touch with the past members and hanging out and being bros. And it's not all about conflict and stuff. It's very wholesome. It's a big family, shall we say? Oh well, yeah, there we go. That's my Voivod tier list. Makes a nice little F shape. You know, F is in fucking metal. And yeah, again, when the Nothing Face video is out, please go and watch that. It would mean a lot to me. Um, and then, yeah, I will be seeing these guys on tour. Coming up. Be a great time. So, hope you all enjoyed that. I'll catch you next time. Have a good night.